Charlotte. Jeff is a contributing editor to Harper's Magazine. He has been a frequent guest on this show for his coverage of The Family, the secretive religious organization best known because it runs C Street, the infamous home for lawmakers in Washington, D.C., that's been tied to a number of political sex scandals this year. As Jeff has previously reported on this show, The Family is directly connected to the Uganda Kill the Gays legislation. And Jeff joins us now to bring us some new reporting on that subject tonight. Jeff, thanks very much for your time. Hey, Rachel, good to be here. Just for context and, and to reiterate here, the, the man who introduced the Kill the Gays bill in Uganda is a member of the family, yes? Yes, it's a, a young member of parliament, David Bahati, a rising star who uh, uh, has been over to the United States for our national prayer breakfast and has taken uh, something of an organizing role in the Ugandan national prayer breakfast and uh, has been involved with the family for some time. Now, as I understand it, you have some new reporting today about when and where Mr. Bahati first announced his intent to introduce the, the Kill the Gays bill. Yeah, exactly. I think a lot of us have focused on that, that March Kampala conference and, and the idea being that the Ugandans sort of got this idea from, from Scott Lively and, and, and Richard Cohen and so on. It seems David Bahati was thinking about this before that as far back as the October 2008 Ugandan National Prayer Breakfast where he floated uh, the, the idea in a private meeting. Uh, there was some pushback. I should, it's important to, to acknowledge that uh, a lot members of the family uh, sort of expressed some disapproval of it, uh, but in the balance, as, as one family associate explained to me, there's always a balance between access and accountability, access to power and holding power accountable, and in that instance, uh, they seem to prefer continuing the access to power of these Ugandan officials rather than uh, stepping in and, and nipping that thing in the bud. So just to be clear, I mean, we have a national prayer breakfast here in the United mm -hmm. States that is uh, run by the family. It's become a very mainstream event, something that the president speaks at the Ugandan National Prayer Breakfast. It's also a family event. It's run there the way that it is here in America. Yeah, I spoke today actually with with the uh, the family member who helped uh, set it up. Uh, this year was the 11th annual National uh, Ugandan Prayer Breakfast, but he actually was uh, working on it in the early 90s. I should say he started with the best of intentions, but it's a, a really again one of these illustrations of where things can go awry when someone like David Bahadi or or Baturo or these politicians are backing this see this this sort of American export and use it as a vehicle to take American culture war to extreme ends. Do we know if there were any Americans present, any American family members or any other mm -hmm. American elected officials um, that were present at that national prayer breakfast in Uganda when Mr. Bahati first floated this idea of executing gay people? Yeah, there were a number of American family members, family uh, activists who uh, working uh, in Uganda who were at the Ugandan uh, National Prayer Breakfast. The keynote speaker at the event was an American uh, Christian business consultant who runs something called uh, Jesus Christ Quality Management Consultants and also the Institute for National Transformation. Uh, uh, President Museveni of Uganda uh, promptly uh, signed Uganda up for one of these institutes after the event. But also possibly present, we haven't yet been able to confirm this, is, is Senator James Inhofe, who's been especially active with the Ugandan National Prayer Breakfast. He, he goes there about twice a year. He's gone to many of the breakfasts. The Ugandan uh, family associates uh, thank Inhofe for his wisdom and insight and, and, and helping making the Ugandan National Prayer Breakfast what it is. It's one thing, Jeff, just in the big picture, to think about something bad happening on a human rights issue in another country. The reason that this is a big story in the United States, or at least mm -hmm. I think it justifies all the time that we've given it on this show, is because it does seem to have a real American inflection. And if Americans, as you say, do have a lot of access and influence, mm -hmm. that comes with, that ought to come, uh, that ought to have accountability uh, come with it. And so I have to ask, if the ex idea of executing gay people um, executing people for being gay in this country, I in Uganda, uh, was floated at a family event. This proposed legislation was introduced there. And this Ugandan legislator who proposed it is a member of the family. And the Ugandan ethics minister who is supporting it on behalf of the Ugandan government and president is also a member of the family. What's been the reaction inside the family here in the United States about this being proposed? 
Well, that's actually where the really big news is. I think there's there's almost a schism within the family. Uh, there's uh, you know there's the Ugandan branch, which is actually promoting the bill, uh, and then there's uh, a man like Bob Hunter, who actually sort of helped build the, the the family relationship with President Museveni, but is very firmly against the bill. Has been uh, sort of quietly working against the bill and trying to reach out to the family's political allies, like Senator Inhofe, Senator Brownback, and get them to to step up, and they uh, uh, unfortunately have been resistant to do so. Uh, in fact, they had this influence in the Ugandan government, but now they're saying, well, we don't want to in interfere in Ugandan affairs. That hasn't stopped uh, men like Senator Inhofe or, or Congressman Pitts from uh, interfering uh, with uh, things like condom distribution in Uganda. They've been very uh, active in the, the most uh, uh, intimate details of Ugandan life, but on this issue, they're stepping back while some other members of the family uh, are, are really drawing the line here and and I think that's important to recognize that uh, across the spectrum there is a lot of opposition um, and, and the family could have a really great impact on this if they are able to marshal uh, the influence and power they have there. To be clear, just in terms of our reporting and trying to get to the bottom of this, we have spoken to a number of elected, the offices of a number of elected officials, conservative politicians here in the U.S. associated with the family, and while a number of them have told us they're against this bill, not one of them has said they would do anything publicly mm -hmm. um, to stop it um, in Uganda. Jeff, I have to ask you about one last thing, uh, and I know you talked to our producers about this earlier today, and this may be the single most inflammatory thing we have reported to date. Uh, these Ugandan um, kill the gays guys, the guy who introduced the legislation and the guy who's mostly promoting it in the government, the, 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 the minister, the ethics minister, they're planning to come to the United States next year? Uh, this February for the American National Prayer Breakfast, this will be, uh, if it happens, it will be a repeat uh, for, for David Bahati, the, the, the man who's introduced the bill. Uh, now, here's another interesting sort of element of the schism within the family. Uh, Baturo and Bahati think they're coming. Baturo told my researcher that he was coming. Bahati has a whole agenda laid out. When I spoke to uh, a family associates today, they said, well, that may not happen. So, again, you know, you keep that pressure up. Uh, uh, there, there's a possibility um, that the family might actually use its influence and not disinvite those guys uh, from coming to the American National Prayer Breakfast. And if not, there's the prospect of the American president speaking at an event uh, before an invited audience that includes the guy who promoted, uh, who introduced legislation to execute people for being gay in his country uh, with the support and encouragement of American quacks like ex-gay fake therapists. Wow. Uh, Jeff Charlotte, contributing editor to Harper's Magazine, author of the book The Family, The Secret Fundamentalism at the Heart of American Power. Uh, great reporting on this story. You've got amazing sourcing on this, as always, Jeff. Thanks very much for sharing it with us. Thank you, Rachel.